Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Today, we are going to discuss a topic that is very important from conceptual point of view and also very important in context of examination because this is probably one of the most commonly asked question, especially the long question and also in the Viber table uh, from the chapter of concept of health and disease. So it is important that students understand what are the different levels of prevention and the modes of intervention. In today's video, we are going to talk about the different levels of prevention. Now, from our previous video, if you have followed it already, where we discussed the natural history of disease, we already know how the disease occurs and how it progresses naturally. So we can have pathogens or risk factors. Pathogens include bacteria, virus, parasites, fungi, etc. And these pathogens are responsible for different communicable diseases. Alternatively, we can also have different risk factors which are responsible for non-communicable diseases. Now, sometimes human population are exposed to these pathogens or risk factors and that can lead to the development of disease. The disease can progress further and develop different complications and can also result in death of the person. Okay, so this is the natural history of disease where the disease progresses in a natural pathway when we are not intervening the disease process with any kind of treatment or any intervention. All right. Now, what are the different levels of prevention? There are four different levels of prevention. The primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention and tertiary prevention here i must mention that often the primordial prevention is also uh, included in primary prevention or said that it is a part of the primary prevention now first one is the primordial prevention the first important thing in the causation of disease is the presence of pathogen or risk factor as i mentioned that the pathogens are responsible for communicable diseases while the risk factors are responsible for non-communicable diseases so if we could take any step or any any measure so that the pathogens or the risk factors do not develop at all that would be considered as the primordial prevention now this primordial prevention is a concept in the prevention of chronic diseases especially the non-communicable diseases so by definition the prevention of emergence or development of risk factors in countries or population groups in which they have not yet appeared. So we are talking about a group of people where the risk factors are not yet there. As I mentioned, this is more commonly a concept for the non-communicable diseases or the chronic diseases. So we can exclude the pathogen because it is quite difficult to control the pathogen. They are uh, development multiplication it is quite difficult to control for us so we mostly focus on the risk factors to prevent the non-communicable diseases so primordial prevention is a concept mainly for the non-communicable diseases <coughs> and that is why you are talking about the uh, the prevention of the development of the risk factors so this group of people where the risk factors have not yet developed and we take certain measures to ensure that the risk factors do not develop at all that is considered as the uh, primordial prevention. Some of the examples are given here. Discouraging children from adapting harmful lifestyles. So even from their childhood, if every person can adapt lifestyle which is beneficial to them and can discourage, can be discouraged from adapting harmful lifestyles, that is beneficial for them. For example, involving in physical exercises, healthy diets can avoid development of obesity. And this obesity is also known as the risk factor for many non-communicable diseases like hypertension, diabetes, etc. So this uh, NCDs can be avoided if obesity can be avoided and we can 
prevent the development of obesity which is the risk factor here by being involved in different physical activities or adapting healthy diets etc so this is an example of primordial prevention next is the primary prevention so we already have the pathogen and risk factor we could not control them or we could not prevent the development of this risk factors etc so the human population is exposed to that and that will lead to the causation of disease we know that now if we could do something that even after the exposure the disease can be prevented that is considered as the primary prevention so here the exposure has already taken or you can say the risk factors are already there so we are doing something so that the disease does not occur at all that is considered as the primary prevention okay again by definition it says action taken prior to the onset of disease which removes the possibility that a disease will ever occur so basically we are doing something so that the disease does not develop at all we are doing anything to prevent the occurrence of the disease before it even develops that is the primary prevention we can have the population strategy so this strategy is taken for everyone directed at the whole population irrespective of the individual risk levels so if we can control the intake of fatty food in a given population we will also see that there is a decline in the incidence or prevalence of hypertension and here we are basically talking about the reduction of oil intake or fatty food intake in the whole population not at individual level so this is population strategy high risk strategy is for those people who are at high risk so individuals at special risk like uh, women belonging to reproductive age group uh, they are more prone to develop nutritional anemia okay so there is iron deficiency anemia so we can uh, ensure that they take iron folic acid tablets regularly as per the schedule uh, so that is a measure for the high risk population or people who are at special risk so this is high risk strategy that is all about primary prevention coming to the secondary prevention here the disease has already occurred so there is pathogen and risk factors human population have been exposed to the risk factors and pathogens and the disease has already occurred we know what happens next the disease can progress further to develop the complication including death here we want to do something or we want to take some measure so that the disease process does not develop further to uh, any kind of complication so we are trying to do something in this stage the disease has already taken place but we are trying to avoid the uh, development of the complication so we are basically trying to cut down the progression of the disease to the level or to the stage where complications including death can occur so this is the secondary prevention so action which halts the progress of a disease at its incipient stage and prevents complications so basically the disease has already started and when it is trying to progress further we are trying to do something at the incipient stage or at very early stage so that the complications do not occur and what we have to do for that we have to focus on earlier detection of the disease and prompt management the earlier a disease can be uh, diagnosed and the treatment can be started the better it is for the person the prognosis is better and there is less chance of development of complications because of that disease and secondary prevention is lar largely in the domain of clinical medicine because we are mostly involved in different diagnostic procedures and then the clinical uh, management of the particular disease next is the tertiary prevention which is the last or fourth kind of prevention here we have the pathogens and risk factors the human population is exposed to the risk factors and pathogens disease has already developed and complications have also developed that means the disease has progressed to a particular stage or a certain stage or beyond a certain point where complications have already occurred we have to do something so that the complications can be minimized all right so the complications are already already taken place we cannot do anything about that but the steps are taken to control the 
damage as much as possible so this is basically tertiary prevention so so all measures available to reduce or limit impairments and disabilities minimize suffering caused by the existing departure from good health and to promote the patient's adjustment to irremediable condition this is the definition of tertiary prevention so what does it mean it means uh, we are trying to either minimize or to reduce the impairments and disability the impairments and disabilities have already taken place we cannot do anything about that but what we can do is we can minimize the level of the impairments and disabilities also we can try to minimize the suffering of the patient because of the departure from the status of good health and to ensure that the patient can adjust to the condition which is not remediable anymore this is tertiary prevention and it includes treatment even in the late stage of the disease rehabilitation etc because continuation or even initiation of the treatment in the later part of the or later stage of the disease can minimize suffering from the disease can minimize the level of impairment disabilities etc and also there is role of re rehabilitation uh, so this is all about the different levels of prevention we have four levels primordial primary secondary and tertiary and uh, we have explained what these individual levels are and we have given some examples for that in our next class we shall also talk about the different modes of intervention under individual levels of prevention with this we conclude today's session if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends we also have our facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description Take care and we shall see you in our next video.